Uh, yeah, we actually experienced a really cool answer to prayer this year. My family did. Um, about six months ago, my aunt, she was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of cancer. And she was told by the doctors right when she was diagnosed that she was given a year to live. So this was obviously very devastating to the whole family. Um, so she told us and then my husband and I had to tell the kids. We didn't tell the kids all the details, but we told them enough that their aunt was sick with cancer and we needed to pray. So as we're telling them, you know, our oldest son got it more than the other kids and, you know, his little eyes well up with tears, but we just spoke together as a family and we said, let's pray together. This is what our family member is asking is that we would pray together. And so it was really cool to see the kids take that serious from the oldest to the youngest that could do that every day saying, okay, we have to pray for our aunt. We have to pray for our aunt. It was really special and really cool. And we didn't know what the outcome of our prayer was going to be. We just knew that we were going to pray. And um, actually, maybe three weeks ago, um, my aunt went for all the PET scans because she immediately had gone into treatment. So she went in for all the PET scans six months out from the diagnosis. And she sent us a text that she, was, she has zero cancer. So that's just really cool. She sent the text to me, of course. So I'm like so excited to be able to tell the children when they get home from school. So I, I actually handed the phone to my oldest son. I said, here, read this text out loud to your brothers. And he did. And it was really sweet to just see the little tear roll down his face. So for us, that was very special to see like the intimacy of God's answered prayer and life right in our children being able to see it. Like they knew their aunt was very sick. They knew they were asked to pray. They did that. We did that as a family every single day, every morning, every night, they prayed for their aunt. And then to get the text that their aunt had no more cancer in her body, and the doctors were even surprised by that, was such a testimony of prayer to our family and a huge answer to prayer for our family this year that we're super thankful for. Towards the end of the year, uh, I didn't think the guy could do any more this year. He had done so much, he's done so much. Um, one of our pastors in South Africa, um, one of his young female church members came down with advanced, well, she was diagnosed with an advanced stage of cancer. Um, they said, you're not gonna have long with her. Um, make her as comfortable as possible. Come and visit her and love her. And Pastor Katani and his wife, they just decided that it is the privilege of the body to pray. In Deuteronomy 7, 9, it is the opportunity of the body to pray. And why can't we continue to believe God for great things? So they quietly began to pray. There wasn't a lot of fanfare, a lot of rah-rah, just quietly seeking God. And then on November 17th of this year, when they ran routine tests to just detect the progression of the cancer, it was gone, completely gone. This is the interaction that the doctor had with Pastor Katani. Can you please explain for me what is going on here because I don't really understand. Um, we have brought in, um, we're connected to a medical training facility. We brought in the experts to try to check and see what really happened. So the attending oncologist requested the assistance of the experts just so she could understand how it's possible for cancer to disappear completely without clinical intervention. She was astounded by what she saw. Pastor Kassani just says, um, we are grateful to God for this answered prayer. We are very much encouraged and built up. Our prayer life as a body has been strengthened. Indeed, we serve a living, mighty God. All the glory and honor belongs to Him. Josh Goody. We're here at Camp Life 2022. We've been praying for you every single morning. We love you. You're an amazing young man, and these kids want to say something to you right now. that video was 
in literally in tears as, as, as soon as it started. I was really touched by that and blessed that so many people were praying for me, and especially kids my age, even younger and older. Hi, my name is Josh. Uh, I was sick this summer in hospital, and chances are you probably prayed for me. So what basically happened was um, I got in surgery. I was diagnosed with bowel obstruction, and I got the surgery. Then afterwards, there were some complications, and I couldn't eat anything. I was on something called TPN, which feeds me without eating. And then after a few weeks, the doctors were saying, well, if he can't eat anymore, if nothing clears up, there might be just like some kind of blockage. They might need to do a second surgery. As a mom, uh, there's nothing worse than seeing your child in pain or seeing your child go through something and you, you can do nothing. <laughs> so for me, that brought me to a, a deeper level uh, with God of surrender. I think uh, surrender in prayer is really important because we, uh, we beg God for Joshua's healing. He was in hospital for seven weeks and for six weeks of that time, there was no progress. Even the doctors didn't really know what to do. He couldn't eat. He was going to face another surgery that was going to be riskier. And um, there were many complications. So it's like, what do we do? Like, you know, you, you turn to God and things become so real when you're in a moment of crisis because your whole Christianity becomes everything and prayer becomes everything. It's like, you, you, you know, you, it's not uh, surface Christianity. It's not surface prayer. It's prayer from the heart. So my mom asked a lot of people to pray and some even fasted for me. If you are one of them, uh, thank you so much. It really blesses me. Our prayers, our prayers, the prayers were answered because what happened the day before the surgery, the surgery was planned for Friday that week. The day before, on Thursday, she asked for a test called an upper GI to see if any fluid they gave me, gives me goes through. And so she asked for the test and the sur surgeon thought it was just crazy. It would be impossible that it would go through at this time. And then at the same time, God was bringing me to a place of surrender not my will, but yours be done, whatever that means. I had to give my son over to God and surrender to God's will, whatever that meant. And I can say that at that time, I experienced a peace that passes understanding, a deeper peace than I have ever experienced in 40 years of Christian life. And it came when my daughter and I actually were listening to a song called Turn It Around, and we were praising God, we were crying, we were confessing, God, you do the impossible, you do it now. And that's actually almost the exact moment that the miracle took place. The amazing thing about that prayer request that all of us prayed for Joshua, uh, we heard on that day that he was scheduled for surgery the next morning, and we prayed together as a camp there were over 400 of us gathered in that chapel. We prayed that God would heal him and that surgery wouldn't be necessary. So I did the test and it came back and it all went through. God did a miracle, he turned it around. And it's, I definitely think that God does answer prayer and I've seen him work in many ways and he can do the impossible. And his timing is perfect, even if it seems like, oh, he's not answering prayer, he doesn't listen, he can't hear you, or he's not important, it don't matter, he's there. I mean, the kids were walking around camp and saying, can you believe it? He was healed, God heard our prayer, and Joshua didn't need that surgery. It was almost like, wow, we asked God, and we cried out to him, and he answered our prayer you could see just how deeply touched all of the campers were, knowing that God did step in, heard our cry, and healed Joshua. I'm praying God.